As you can imagine, nitpick videos for Sea of Thieves tend to do really well. From the uncentered capstan becoming canon and the chimneys in the taverns not having functional chimneys, Sea of Thieves has a lot of issues with its immersion. Something I haven't seen brought up a whole lot is the sheer amount of plot holes in the game's story and you'll be baffled once I point more out. Obviously, some stuff is a result of creating negative space, such as the origins of Flameheart or the year between the start of the discovery of the Sea of Thieves and, well, everything else. But yeah, let's cover some of the craziest plot holes in Sea of Thieves. Let's start with Captain Pendragon, the champion of souls, known for kicking names and taking... Wait, yeah, ignore that. He hates skeleton lords and likes saving souls. That's his whole purpose. As you'll know, he helped bring back Captain Flameheart and the Seabound Soul. If it wasn't for him, the greatest pirate to ever sail the seas would never be back again. Right at the end, we enter the chamber to see old Horatio laying Flameheart to rest. Both of these skeleton lords look like skeleton lords. And Pendragon decides, yeah, these guys must be good people, and they need to be released. How does he not recognise the most feared captain ever to roam the Sea of Thieves? A man who was defeated only 10 years ago too. How does he not recognise him? He even admits this in the start of Heart of Fire claiming he didn't know who the skull belonged to at the time, only finding out when he released him. You're telling me, the champion of souls, as the bloke who slayed countless skellies and skeleton lords, had no idea who Flameheart or the Ashen Lords were. And then several months later, we get some comics covering Pendragon's origin story. And at the end of issue one, look who he fights. He fights Captain Grimm, an Ashen Lord. So he was around the same time as Flameheart, or at least after he was defeated and Grimm was still kicking. But even then, so many pirates would recognise an Ashen Lord at the time. It's almost like Pendragon knows exactly what he's doing when he released him. This is such a contrived plot point, or Pendragon has amnesia. Whatever. It's a massive contradiction in the lore. If we're on the topic of Flameheart, then his return has to be the biggest long shot in the history of Sea of Thieves. He was defeated through unknown means, so he somehow hatched a plan to bring himself back when the time comes. Like, the odds are so slim, Flameheart must have gotten all his treasure from winning the lottery. This involves planning for his defeat, having old Horatio get his body, getting it to the Ashen Dragon, all the way to Flintlock Peninsula and sealing it away in a tomb, whilst taking his finger with it. Then. Ten years later, some random weaponsmith finds his ship and begins a series of events that ends up with his return. It's even more crazy when you consider the hiccups, like Jem losing the relics in Dark Relics, or relying on Pendragon not knowing what he looks like. It must be sheer luck. Or the servant has been pulling everyone's strings to set the stage. Like, why didn't Athena's fortune just finish the job ten years ago? But I guess that falls into the negative space category. Up next, we have some contradictions in the lore. Originally, when the Sea King was killed, he had his soul sealed in the chest, or bound to the object and his sorrow created a curse on that chest, where it would cry forever. We're told in Athena's fortune that the Pirate Lord created all chests we find in the Sea of Thieves, from the castaway right up into the cursed chests. Now, the Gold Hoarders have the keys for all of them, and we have to take them all to the Gold Hoarders so they can open them. We find out in the book the Pirate Lord used the curse to change to forge them, which were originally used to kill Old Mother. He even forges the chest of a thousand grogs. In Sea of Thieves Season 4, we also find out the chest of everlasting sorrow was created by accident, as a byproduct of sealing the Sea King in it. So, how does the Pirate Lord know how to replicate this curse? Did the merfolk just say to him, yeah, we can't offer you gold, but we can give you these chains and show you how to make a box cry. We heard how those other humans did it by mistake. Also, we can show you how to get pissed without drinking a single tankard of grog. Knowing Ramsay, always having a pint in his hands, he definitely said yes. It's not about the gold, it's about the grog. So yeah, a bit of a chicken and the egg situation. How did Ramsay figure out how to make something that was discovered by accident is beyond me. Another one is really recent, but in The Forsaken Hunter, we end up having to complete a step where we find out Madame Olga was kidnapped by Amaranta to fuse the staff together with the Gold Hoarder's skull. When we go there, we speak to her and she admits she was kidnapped again after the events of Forts of the Forgotten. We also have to speak to Wanda, with an O, at her shop. What I'm struggling to understand is, where would this step have occurred if Golden Sands wasn't saved? Where would Amaranta leave the note? Where would she kidnap Olga from? Would this step be removed entirely? Who knows, and I guess we'll never know because Golden Sands was saved. It keeps on going. I've mentioned it before, but I will say it again. The inconsistency with ship sizes. Only ships of a certain size can be sailed through the Shroud. The larger ones simply are too big. Now, when you look at every name shipped in the game, the Morning Star, the Magpie's Wing and Fortune, the Athena's Fortune, all of them are larger than the actual galleons we sail in the game, and we only have two that are actual size. These being the Burning Blade and the Silver Blade. I get it rare. They can have larger ships, but we can't. Speaking of the Morning Star, did you know it's actually been sunk twice? The first time was during Athena's Fortune, where the Kraken drags it down to the depths near Golden Sands Outpost. Then we see it again during the Heart of Fire book, and it's eventually sunk again by Grey Marrow before the events of the game. 
where its details have been sunk by salty sands. We know merfolk can dredge ships up, but this was never explained into a pirate's life, so I think the writers just forgot. It is a blink and you miss it sort of thing. The Burning Blade also suffers from the same plot holes. I have mentioned this before, but the Burning Blade in the Heart of Fire is missing a cannon, the same one that was raised by Wanda before Cursed Sails. But when you see it in the Flameheart World event, it has all of its cannons. This is explained by the Burning Blade being a memory. This was sort of brought back by Wanda when she dived down to the wreck. Then, if that's the case, why is Flameheart conjuring up a memory of the ship from after he died in the Heart of Fire? As the cannon was gone long after he had died, does this mean that it's Wanda's memory he's drawing from and still has some sort of connection with her? Who knows? That pretty much rounds up the list so far. Do you know any plot holes in Sea of Thieves? Please let me know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe for more videos and drop a like, it really helps the channel out. Thanks again for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.